Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. My guest today was holed up and horny when she started doing cam shows during the pandemic. Four years later, she has made her way into mainstream porn and is definitely a newbie to watch. In fact, I called up my friend Mike Quasar, who I rely on for his opinion on everyone, and he said she was amazing, so I decided that she must come in and talk to me. Uh, It is Millie Morgan. Hello. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having I, me. You're so welcome. I'm so happy that you could make it. How are you feeling? I'm stoked. It's been kind of like a crazy month with Expos Miami and some travels that didn't plan out, but I'm just really happy to be here. Happy with where I'm at right now. How was Expos Miami? It was so much fun. I wanted to go, but I couldn't because my husband was out of town at the same time and we needed someone to take care of. Have you been before? The child. So, No. Oh, you have to go. Do I? It's like a giant pool party where that's everyone's what I, just like turning it, up and having that's fun. That's what it looks like. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. It's like a work vacation. That sounds fun. Yeah. You have to be there fun. next year. I'll never make it. I don't have fun anymore. It's not part of my my life. Okay. That wasn't supposed, <laughs> that was supposed to be a joke. Everyone got really <laughs> I was quiet. Like, that's where the, the sad, sad sound effect comes in. The sad like, violin. Just, just, just joking. Just joking. <laughs> I'm, I'm, having fun. I'm having fun talking about how I don't have fun anymore. <laughs> Anyways. Um, okay. So Millie, uh, let's, you know, take it from the beginning. Tell me about growing up in Alabama. Was sex something that was talked about in your family at all? I mean, I had a sort of different upbringing than a lot of people who were raised in the South. We weren't particularly conservative or religious. So I'd say that allowed for like different conversations around sex rather than just like, don't have sex. Um, my mom was, which a, literally is not a conversation. It's just like exactly. a, like a directive. Rule. Yeah. Just, just don't like, have sex. And then you're like, I'm like oh, okay. But hormones. Abstinence. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. But my mom was a really big Indigo Girls fan my whole life. And that was like a point of controversy in my hometown, you know, because like Indigo Girls are super gay. Like wow. iconic lesbian duo. So I'd say that that was kind of like a motif growing up or like. People would be like, oh, my God, like, your mom's a secret lesbian. And I'd be like, your parents are divorced. (laughs) Like, So sex was a part of my upbringing, but in the way that I grew up a lot more liberal than Mm -hmm. my surroundings. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then you moved to California to pursue acting. Is that right? More or less. No, I actually moved to California when I was a teenager. So I was still in middle school. So it wasn't your choice, basically. No, it wasn't my choice, but it was my dream, actually. I had been dreaming about moving to California since I could walk, since Mm -hmm. I was a toddler. I had told my mom, like, Mom, I'm going to live in California one day. Okay, so if you dreamt of moving to California since you were young, I imagine there was some, like, piece of media that really inspired you or several people. Like, where did you get that idea that you wanted to move to California? You know, it's really interesting that you say that because apparently at the age that I was articulating, like, Mom, I want to move to California, I was like, just able to talk, like two and three years old. So like, I don't remember. Like, I can't tell you what influenced me. It was just kind of like, at that age, it was just already very innate within me. I remember going to like a field trip on, to the library when I was like in kindergarten and like sneaking away to the nonfiction section and grabbing like an informational book about California and like bringing that home to my mom and being like, mama, read me. And like spouting off the demographics and things like that, looking at all the pictures. Wow. So, yeah, it was really, really young that I became obsessed with the idea that, you know, I was going to get out of Alabama. Um, And at first I thought that, you know, school and education and getting a scholarship would be my best way out. But then when my family, it was fortuitous for us to move, I was just like... Did your parents, like, move because of work or was there other Sort of, kind of. My dad's best friend has, like, a company out here and they have really long-standing relationships. So we moved out here to kind of support his company and his business, so... It was a work opportunity, but also like they wanted to support me and the fact that it was a little bit of both. We didn't have the the ties in Alabama anymore. So it was time to start a new chapter. Wow. How excited were you when you like, do you remember like finding out when you were moving to California? It was actually, it was really ironic because it was kind of like around the time that I was starting to like come of age. I was like, 12 or 13. So I was just really starting to like appreciate my friend group and really kind of like identify in that way. So it was kind of like, earth shattering in a lot of ways because it was like my dreams were coming true, but I was losing so much. But 
that my dreams came true. Yeah. <laughs> How did you acclimate when you got to California? Was it easy for you to make new friends? Or um, I'd say so. I've always been pretty outgoing and sociable. Um, I lost my accent after about three months. Oh, wow. So that made it a lot easier after that. Mm-hmm. Um, can you still like fall back into the accent at times? Oh, yeah. I can turn it on whenever I want. You know, it's, it's not like it's like an authentic Southern accent. And if I were to be like on the phone with my mama, I feel like it would get a lot deeper and a lot, you know, but. <laughs> I love that. Wow. That is great. That is great. I, I can't do any other accents. That's okay. I can't I can't do any either. My mom's English and my British accent is like the worst thing you've ever heard. So I want to hear that later. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> we'll have to see. Um, okay, so but you obviously like got into acting at some point. Like tell me when that bug bit you. Yeah, that was when I was a teenager. Um, I'd always grown up performing. I was a dancer my whole life. Um Starting acting, I was really to impress a guy um, because he had done theater. And so I wanted him to think that I was cool. But why else do we do things in life? I know, right? But ultimately, I stuck with it because I found out that I loved it. And I didn't really necessarily, I started doing acting in college. Um, I had a huge, I got a theater major. Um, But I stopped acting because I just hated auditioning. I thought it sucked and was so lame. Um, What did you hate about auditioning? I don't like putting myself out there with knowing that the purpose is like, they are going to approve or reject me. I'm totally fine with putting myself out there in a way that I know that people are going to like me sometimes and sometimes they may not. But the whole like, the purpose of the judgment is just like, it's so intense. Like, and it's also so hyper specific in terms of it's not personal, you know, like they're looking for this vision of this character and it's just like, you don't know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to do acting when I was younger too. And um, not only was I not good at it, um, but I remember my mom, like, because she was a model before, you know, she was like, you don't want to go through that and go to auditions. And like, she's like, it's brutal. It's really hard. And that's why it's kind of like in porn. I'd like to think that I'm a good actress. I hope no one tells me otherwise. I mean, I've made it this far. But I mean, that's what I feel like in terms of porn. The stakes are lower in terms of like the goal isn't for someone to appreciate my acting talents when they sit down to watch the movie. So if I'm a nice actress, that's like a fun surprise. But it's also, you know? and it also like probably gets you a lot more work in terms of. You know, because as directors, like we're always looking, if we're doing, you know, a feature, we're looking for good actresses and, you know, it's not easy to find because most people get into porn with no background in acting, no training and no like desire to ever go down that route. So sometimes we're asking a lot of people that like aren't actually into acting or like, like I said, have no like training whatsoever. Yeah, exactly. And because porn scripts are really written for like Mm non-actors, they are just so unbelievably easy to someone who Mm -hmm. does have an acting background. So I don't know. It's it's kind of fun in that way just to be like, oh, okay. So does that make you like doing features or scenes with a lot of dialogue more so than like say gonzo scenes? Yeah. I mean, I like to be able to be myself on set and be able to just live in who I am as Millie Morgan, but it's also really fun to just like do dialogue. And I really, I do um, like a handful of MILF scenes with the FOSAS, like improv And I think that that's like surprisingly kind of fun to just kind of think like how far out there can I go and try to bring that. I don't even know what you asked. You're not, you're, not, pl- you're not playing the MILF, right? Yeah. You're playing the MILF? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a MILF. I'd say about thirty mm, percent of my scenes, maybe thirty to forty, are milf scenes. Really? Yeah. Fuck. So I and I've just started. I've been in the industry about a year, so I've been in a couple of features, um, but I haven't really had my time yet to f- fully shine and show off my acting capacity. So I know that that'll come. Do you have like a dream role that you would love to do? I mean, just anything and everything. Like mm. I'm hungry for all of it. Like something, just something different. I mean, I love being able to be someone catty. I love being able to be someone sweet. I love being able to be everything, you know? What is a favorite um, acting role that you've gotten so far? Oh, my goodness. Um, I think one particular, just because of how silly and absurd it was, was like a, a team skeet, get a job scene, encouraging my kids to get a job. 
Um, but it's absurd and it's ridiculous and it's just so silly and lighthearted and I love it so much. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely days on set when you're like, <laughs> when you read the script and you're like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, really? Yeah, no. This is what I gotta do? No. And it's absurd, but it's like, it's true to life. Like my character's like so mad that we don't have money for sparkling water or whatever. But like, actually when I run out of sparkling water in my house, it's like the same disgust where I'm like, oh, sparkling water. Ugh. I mean, yeah, you're That's drinking. You're drinking. She's drinking liquid death sparkling water right now. Hmm. I'm it's so delicious. It is out of a can, not out of a plastic bottle. Have you heard about what microplastics are doing to the planet? And uh, apparently, your balls. Everyone's got microplastics in their balls. Swimming all over. Yeah. Crazy, right? Yeah, it is. They're everywhere. I heard that you inhale a credit card size worth of micro. Well, not inhale. Well, inhale partially, but. We consume a credit card size of microplastics like every day. I feel like I every day, somewhere. yeah. I was like hoping you were going to say every year, and I was yeah. like, yeah, sounds about right. Every, every day, every day. But I could be totally wrong about that. I'm not wrong about the credit card size of microplastics because I definitely read that. But I could be way off in the time, which makes a significant difference. So I can't flush that shit out. Yeah, but I mean, who you know? Let's just go by headlines. Let's not read into it. People, let's not actually do any research on what I just said. Just, 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 it's, it's every day. Just go with We've it. We've all got them. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into how you made the move from mainstream acting into adult acting. Yeah. So actually, um, I was on a more behind the scenes role because I was in a, an administrative full-time role before I jumped into porn, but I would dabble every now and again with acting, um, particularly when the organization I was working with would need actors um, to come in. So we had a really unique program where we'd go into maximum security prisons. These were men's prisons. Um, and teach them how to write scripts. So, wow. Um, That's very specific. Yeah. So there's so much that you can learn. Like a lot of their um, their language skills and their writing skills just aren't fully developed. Um, so it's just a matter of... Um, preparing them for job interviews with their writing skills, um, their public speaking skills, the acting and hearing their words out loud, and also like just revisiting their their trauma through their life and being able to write a new ending and kind of like be lighthearted and not everything has to be so serious in prison. So, so yeah, it was really special to be involved with something like that. And I, um, my last acting job before porn was in a maximum security men's prison. Wow. So tell me a little bit more about that. Like, what was it like going into the prison? Like, tell me about the protocol, like getting in, like, what were the people like? Were there any like inspirational stories, any scary moments? It's a pretty intense process. You know, they have to like screen you and background check you and everything like that. And um, when you're going in, you have to like sign paperwork that says like they don't negotiate for hostages and things like that. (laughs) And that like incentivizes them not to take hostages. Right. So... You know, wow. So it's kind of intense. So like basically, that. if someone grabs you, you're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. You, you, no just, you one's live there save now. you. Yeah. But other than that, I'd say that everyone was pretty kind and respectful and very much on their best behavior in terms of like this program is like a privilege for them. Yeah. So they would. They be, probably have to work their way to be able to get into the program, yes, right? Like not exactly. everyone. They have to be like achieve a certain level of good behavior or something. Yes, exactly. So it was really, really fun to get some of them. Like I think about this one play that they wrote. Um, where they were so hyper specific. It was a play about like drug use and about like the myriad reasons that would lead someone to start using drugs. And it's a really beautiful play because it, you know, really destigmatizes the type of people who use drugs. Um, but they were very specific about wanting uh, a song during the play that was um, Rockin' That Shit by The Dream. And I was so funny because I was listening to that on the car. It's like an early 2000s, like R&B, like throwback. But in terms of, uh, this was only a few years ago that, you know, they were writing this play and this song's like 20 years old at this point, but yeah. they've been incarcerated in a while. So it's like, yeah. but they wanted that song. And so I was listening to that song in, the, song in the car on the way here and just thinking about the guys and like, wow. She rocking that shit like. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, so take me through the process a little bit. Okay. So they wrote a play. Yeah. Did they all write a play collaboratively? Collaboratively, did one person write it and other people? Yeah, they'd work together in? to write scripts. You know, it was depending on their capacity. Sometimes they'd work in pairs. You know, someone who was a really strong writer with someone who was a not a strong writer, but mm-hmm. someone who had a lot of fun ideas. They wanted to bounce off of each other. Working in groups was harder, 
but something that we had them do anyways. I mean, it's good social skills if you're going to. So I'm assuming this is like, these are guys that are going to get out at some point, right? Hopefully. No. No? Maximum security, level four. Okay. Like, these are these are lifers. So then how like, is it going to are... help them with a job interview if they can't? Well, so, some of them might. Some okay. of them might. In terms of um, the specifics of like this facility is like a lot of people are in protective custody. So maybe they were involved with gangs or something like that, or maybe they snitched on someone. Um, so, and also some of those are just some of the most serious offenders that are in there for life. So mm-hmm. some of them will get out. Right. Not all of them. Right. Okay. Okay. So, so in in those cases, then it's more like kind of writing out your trauma, finding a way to process what you're going through, and that kind of thing. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the argument is also that just because you're incarcerated doesn't mean that you're not still, you know, a human with humanity and you know skills that you could offer to society just by you know being a good human and you know processing what you've been through and you know sharing creativity and knowledge and learning you know there's still ways that they can have a positive impact on society even if they're you know going to be incarcerated forever yeah yeah okay so so this play um so are there act I'm assuming there's people that are acting in it right yeah so the inmates would act so and then they'd bring in other professional actors so i was one of the professional actors that they brought in but i'd be acting alongside incarcerated individuals Oh, right, because, of course, like, they can't, there are no female prisoners. And now it's a men's prison, right, so they'd so. bring in a couple females, but, you know, we'd have to gender bend a little bit. Right, right. Yeah. Did you ever, I mean, so these are men that don't generally get to interact with women on a regular basis. Exactly. How was that for you? Did you ever feel, like, unsafe a little bit? Like, like what was that vibe? So I'd say that there was definitely a vibe in terms mm-hmm. of, like, the vibe of, oh, my God, I don't know when I'm going to get to talk to a woman again sometimes. Yeah. But it was actually my work going in there was actually one of the reasons I decided that I was going to take the leap and start doing porn um, because we had a a channel on the television that uh, at the at the facility at the prison that ran twenty four seven eventually because we had done so many plays and they would record them and they'd just run them twenty four seven on this channel and then I had the thought. And I was like, how many of these have I been in? And I was like, how how many times do my plays, like, how many times a day am I on that TV? And then I was just thinking statistically that I was like, oh, my God, like, they don't, sometimes they have things to masturbate to, but probably not. Like, I was thinking, I'm like, oh, my God, like, they haven't seen a woman, like, one of the younger of the people who are going in. I was just, like, realizing, I was like, there must be so many incarcerated men masturbating to me. Um. Which I don't know if that's true or not. Like I, I could mean, never I'm really say know. Probably pretty likely. Probably pretty likely. And that like thought made me be like, oh, well, if there's a large group of guys that are masturbating to me, like I'd like to, you know, get a I'd like to co- I'd like to expand that maybe. Well, like, yeah, or just bring that like, to the world. Well, I was just realizing I was like, damn, like I'm never gonna get compensated for that. All those orgasms, like <laughs> they are just like. <laughs> <laughs> just locked and loaded, like and good. Hopefully, I hope that's the case. But, but yeah. So I was just kind of like, let's let's expand the market. Like let's that, reach out. It made me feel comfortable with the idea of men masturbating to me. Basically, wow, that is like such a workaround. Like I've n- <laughs> I've never heard anything like that. That like wow, that is so interesting. So that got you to thinking that you might. I mean. I feel like you must have already had some ideas about working in porn, right? Like they couldn't have like just sprung out of nowhere from this, correct? No, no. I thought about it for a long time, but I really took seriously how long I thought about it because um, I didn't know if I'd want to have some sort of serious acting career someday. So, you know, when I was broken 18 in college, when camming first became a thing, I was just kind of like telling my boyfriend at the time, I was like, we could make some money. People can watch us fuck. Um, but I didn't do it, you know? And I, you know, sat on my hands and I was a very good girl throughout my 20s and had my big girl job and did the big girl things. And at a certain point, I was just like, I'm over it. Like, no. But you really thought about it. I mean, are you, do you feel that that was the right move to wait as long as you did? Absolutely. Or do you wish you had gotten in earlier? Um, I do. And I, you know, I'm really grateful that I was able to learn so much about myself without having an audience for that because I was able to grow and make mistakes and be a messy human. And I, that version of me can live in my memories (laughs) and the people who knew me at the time. Um, And I don't have that following me around, you know, at the same time, like 
could have built a really nice audience if I would have started posting titty pics back then. But no, I'm really grateful. My career has been very divinely guided in a sense. How do you feel about girls who get into uh, porn at 18? Do you think it's too young? Do you think it depends on the person? I think it totally depends on the person. I feel like it's really beneficial to have life experience before you get into porn, regardless of your age. You know, like I feel like it's could be hard for someone who's just really sheltered and is thrown into this world. Um, that's what I would kind of not recommend. I'd just say like, live some life within a world, you know, like flip, yeah, I remember, flip some burgers, like do, yeah. do something else first for at least like a year or two. Yeah. I remember Lena Lopez came on and she said that she thinks that everybody should have like a nine to five before they get into porn, like a, a regular job where you like clock in, where you're like responsible, you know, or you get fired or, you know what I mean? Like all like the, just the little things that, because porn is sort of like a, a weird well, it's not sort of a weird job. It is a weird job, right? And it's different, like it's not a nine to five. And, you know, sometimes you can be irresponsible and cancel and still get work. So it's like, it's kind of, it's not a great place to like teach you lessons about responsibility necessarily. If you have like no experience with that previously, you know, you come right out of high school and never had a job and then like you jump into porn. I think, I think there's something to that. Yeah, I think it's really important to have something else that gives you some sort of like structure and routine and you have that sort of sense of like what the world is like to go off of. Because especially because like in porn, we're, you know, acting out what happens in the real world, quote unquote. So it's like you need to have some sort of touchstone. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk so much more about Millie's career. So stick around and I'll see you in a minute. This episode of Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Adam and Eve. Who wants better sex? And who wants to start having better sex immediately? The best way to get started is to go to adamandeve.com right now, the online superstore for everything sexy. They are offering 50% off of any one item. Plus, when you select your one item, you will also get three special bonus gifts that includes an item for him, a special toy for her, and something we know you'll both enjoy. Also, get six free movies and free discreet shipping. But you can only get the special offer when you go to adamandeve.com and use code HOLLY. So be sure to use code HOLLY to get your 50% discount, 10 free gifts, and free shipping today. All right, guys, we are back. So, Millie, let's talk about, like, your actual, like, first steps in the adult industry. So... You're working in a prison. (laughs) You thought about all these prisoners masturbating to you and that gave you, you know, kind of pushed you towards the idea of like, hey, I could do this as an actual job. Tell me what happened next. Um, I just, I got on my webcam one night, you know, it was kind of a spontaneous thing, even though I'd been doing research for a while. I didn't really feel ready, but I just knew that I needed to dive in and just do it and rip the bandaid off. Um, and my first week camming, I look on back, back on that time so fondly because it was just so much fun. I did not sleep. You know, I was going to my nine to five job during the day and then coming home and like rushing to like log on and then just camming, you know, into the night. Um, and it was, it was so thrilling for me. Um, and I really needed that time um, because I, even though I was, had some life experience, I'd say that still sexually, I was very sheltered. So I, I needed to, to cam for a little bit and realize like how big and vast the world of sex is that I knew nothing about. Like mm-hmm. in terms of like BDSM, I was kind of like, mm, 50 shades of gray, like... Mm. So there, don't ever say that to anybody who's actually in BDSM, right? I like so I had so much to learn. Hate I, I had every, of gray everything so to learn. Absolutely everything. <laughs> so um, tell me what surprised you the most about camming when you started. I think that's surpri- what surprised me the most was that it was something that I could pivot my life towards. Mm. You know, because at first I it's just think that of- like could support you full time. Yeah, in that way that I just kind of it opened up my possibilities as to what my life could be because I just thought it would be something where I'd, you know, get a little sexual tension out, you know, a little side hustle, but it changed my whole life truly. And I'm so grateful for that. So then how did you take the step? What was your next steps in the adult industry? When I first started camming, um, I was doing mostly solo stuff. I did dabble in girl, girl. I had my, um, my first time with a girl, was ever yeah was on camera um for a collab and that was actually about a month into camming Mm -hmm. so I kind of 
jumped in and then kind of went back and needed to build my reputation up some more before I started collabing. Do you remember who it was with? She's not in the industry anymore, okay. but it was a girl named Carmen. She had started right around the same time that I did. So we were kind of like dumb and dumber, like running the show, yeah, like yeah, yeah. both blind leading the blind. Yeah. But it was just so much fun and we had so much energy. Um, and I still have those those videos of our, you know, actual my very actual first time oh, eating, wow. eating pussy, which is... Wow. Cute. Those are probably pretty valuable too. I bet like your fans love to see that because guys love the idea of like an actual first first on camera. Yeah, they do. But I think people don't believe me because they're just mm. like, especially if someone knows who I am now and knows how like sexually open I am. They're like, what? Are you, there's a version of you that had never eaten pussy. Like yeah. that's hard for them to believe. Yeah. But I'm like, oh no. I mean, yeah. There's a version of all of us that have never eaten pussy. I know. I don't want to go back to her though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what growth is all about, right? Amen. Move on. We, you treasure, you appreciate who she was, but you move on to- I need so much pussy now. To, My life to, is so yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> A prolific pussy eater. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's what I strive to be. So, um, okay. So you came for about three years before branching out into mainstream studio shoots. Um, what was that like? It was exciting. It was something that I had always planned on and something that I'd always wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I was very- intentional in that way where I was kind of like, this is a door that I think I want to open, but I really needed to be sure that it was the door for me first. Um, And so it was just kind of very very serendipitous in terms of the time just felt right. I was living in Joshua Tree right before, out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, we lost internet for like three months. Oh my God. And so webcamming wasn't really a possibility. And I was kind of like, well, I think it's time for me to start doing porn. Yeah. And I was dating a guy at the time who didn't really want me to stop doing solo work. He really wanted me to stay a solo act. Um, But that relationship also just wasn't working for me anymore. So I just said, all right, bye, Joshua Tree. Hello, LA. Mm -hmm. Dick me down, baby. It was a blessing. So tell me about your first studio scene and like how that got set up. So my first studio scene was with Porn Dude Casting Couch. Uh, Are you familiar? You're familiar with Porn Dude Casting, right? I don't think so. I mean, I'm familiar with Casting Couch because, like, that's just a thing. Well, like, yeah. but well, not this th- specific one. This one has one. a twist. What the, is the, it? The Porn Dude. He's like, it's got a mascot head. Wait, what? A mascot head. A mascot head. A mascot head. Like, like the guys that dance at baseball games. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what was it? He's we. It's just a guy. He's, no, I know, but like, what's the, what's the he's head? He's a porn dude. What's it's a, he's a dude. It's a hat. It's, oh, yeah. it's like a dude. So he wears like a mascot hat. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. so you're oh, yeah. like fucking a guy who's got a giant hat on. How does that stay on? How does he, he Holly, must get so hot. I, this was a full circle moment for me because I was the high school mascot. So I was so excited actually in terms <laughs> of, I think that like the first time I had seen a porn dude scene, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, like no shade. I was like, so that's kind of embarrassing. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then I was kind of like, after I really like thought about it, I was because I was offered the opportunity and I go, well, you know what? No, that's that's so fucking cool. And I was especially with just like where I come from and just knowing I was in the the mascot suit, you know, like it's so sweaty and it's so gross. And it's just like, did you have this moment where you're like, this is a sign from God that I'm in the right place? Kind of, sort of, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it was the mascot suit. Oh my god! But it, so it was so much fun. It was, it was really silly, but it's strangely significant for me. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, wait. So how does the scene play out? Like, are you sitting there on the couch and you're being interviewed, and then all of a sudden this guy with the mascot head like walks in? Like, when is he introduced? Yeah, sort of. So the interview was actually it was really cool. Um, because I brought my Super Eight camera. Oh, um, and so I shot some Super Eight. During the scene, and they incorporated my Super 8 oh my into God, how awesome. Yeah. And I also I wrote a rap song my first month camming, which is just really silly and ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But like I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty awesome if you do ask me. So I did my rap song and are you gonna, are no, you gonna no, like no, recount no. it first? Oh, no. Now? Oh no, it's not, it's not that epic, Kali. It's, it's not okay. that good. No, you need you need the accompanying music. Oh. Someday maybe I'll give you a whole whole production okay. moment. But just go watch the porn dude scene. You'll see me do it there. You oh know? my God. Amazing. <laughs> but the Super 8 film was really, really fun to yeah. just have like my my love of my hobby and yeah. then just like significant, you know, not, it's not really a sport, but you know, this thing I did in the past yeah. that, you know, meant something to me 
synergized for my first porno. That's like, so that's kind of cool. That's so funny. I'm going to bother you with really boring Super 8 questions after the podcast because I have a Super 8 camera too. And I love using that. I actually just shot like my mom's birthday with it. But the camera itself is, I'm struggling with like, I can't, like the optics, like the eye optics, like I, I can't fucking see. Like focusing is a real struggle for me. Um, so I, I definitely want to get a different one, but I'm not like terribly familiar with all the different versions. Okay. I'm, do you? I'm, I'm very much a novice, but yeah, hobbyist, if you will. But what, do you? Is yours? Because I know that they've come out with like it's so funny because everything that's old is new again, right? I believe that they've come out with like newer versions of a Super 8 camera because like there's a lot of people that are reverting back to to film. Yeah. Um, is this an actual old old Super 8 camera? Is it one of like these new, these like quote unquote new ones? I I have both. I have old old cameras. Okay. Like I have an old Super 8 camera that's got like a crank. Powered, oh, you know, okay. like it doesn't even use batteries. You just crank it oh, to turn wow. it. Oh, okay. Um, and then I also have one that's a Ronda cam. So okay. that's like a newly built, technically an old camera that I think it's refurbished to an extent, but it's okay. also new. I don't, it's kind of confusing in that regard, but yeah. probably a millimeter. Okay, cool. Yeah. I love that. Okay, so back to the mascot thing. Because I actually kind of want to just ask about wearing a mascot suit in general um, how like sweaty and hot and smelly and horrible is it? It's really, really fucking. Gross. And in Alabama too, it gets really hot there. I was in, right? I was in California oh, when I was California. able, so it okay. wasn't that bad. Thankfully, the humidity in the mascot suit, I would not been able to cope. No, yeah. Um, but no, I was an angry cow. Um, and I was very blessed that the year I became the mascot, they started rotating in a brand new suit. So sometimes I was able to be one of the first people making the suit smelly. And other times I was in like this 20 year old, like freaking cow suit that just stunk to holy hell. Oh my God. Like, did they not clean it at out. all? I mean, I think that they would like dry clean it like once a year. But so, like, you know, I just learned this. Uh, uh, w- the way that they clean costumes is they mix vodka and water and they spray it on the costume and then they like leave it overnight and the, the vodka kills the bacteria. That sounds about right. Or you could just drink the vodka and then you wouldn't smell it so badly because you'd be drunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking vodka about. Vodka helps everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I don't think anything could help the kind of stench that was held within this giant head. <laughs> how did you, did you just like, how do you handle it? Did you just get used to it? Yeah, you do kind of become nose blind. And no, the harder part's the fact that you can't really always see out of it because you have little tiny eye holes and these big ridiculous shoes on. And I would try to like navigate the bleachers, you know, which just is a shit show. Yeah, Yeah. that just feels really difficult. Eh, I like a challenge in that way. And plus it's just just so quirky and silly. Like, And no one really knew who the mascot was too. So the whole time I was able to be like, it's not me. Yeah, I would never do that. Yeah, oh my no, god, it's, it's so lame. <laughs> okay, so your first uh, shoot was with the mascot head. Yeah. Um, like, what kind of scenes did you do afterwards? Were there like any scenes afterwards where you really felt like, okay, this is like you had a great experience, and you're like, this is what I want to do. All of them, honestly, just in terms of I've taken so long to get to this path, um, and I think for so long I had been kind of. Um, just like debating with myself. You know, I was happy to be a cam girl and happy to stay in that world. But once I really committed to doing porn, I was just kind of like, I I can't believe I waited so long to be here, but this is exactly where I need to be. Um, so it's just kind of like every experience on step is like so affirming that I'm just like, yes. What was the thing that surprised you the most about porn? All the packing and unpacking. <laughs> I, how many times I have to, you know, like put clothes back into my clothes in my closet without wearing them, you mm-hmm. know, because I'll bring like 20 things to set and mm-hmm. wear two mm-hmm. of them. Yeah. So I'd say that that was one of the most surprising things. That and I think that a lot of um, porn performers hold like some traditional values in a way that you would think that like everyone, because we're having sex with everyone all the time, you'd be like, Oh my God, they must be all like polyamorous, like love children. But it's like, no, a lot of people are just like very traditional values. They want to boo up with a person. Not everyone, of course, Mm -hmm. but you know, I think more people than Mm -hmm. a civilian might think. Yeah. So you like the idea that you're kind of expecting that everybody's in an open relationship and everybody's like a big. But truly, a lot of people are monogamous. yeah. 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 They just don't. Like reveal their partner to yeah, they just their keep, fans they keep their relationship because, private. Yeah, yeah, and usually like then that kind of 
destroys the fantasy. Well, even if I say like, even if they're monogamous, but they, they want a monogamous relationship. So I mean, even if I'm, they're someone single, I'm surprised I'll be talking to them and they're like, oh yeah, I just really want to have, be in a relationship with someone. And I'm like, yeah, but like, we already have sex with all these people. Like you wouldn't be exclusive, right? And they're like, oh yeah, no, I want exclusivity. And I'm just like, what do you want? I don't know what I want, but I'm open. I'm very, very open. And I feel like sex does not diminish love to me. Like, so they're just entirely different. So where I would, could be comfortable in an open relationship as long as my needs are met, even though I haven't been in one, but I don't see it being an issue. What is dating like for you since you've gotten into porn? It's been um, non-existent. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I dated pretty thoroughly throughout my 20s. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty confident that I'm like, this is career time. This is work yeah. time. And I'm also in a very selfish place where I'm just want to do me. And I wouldn't want to have to compromise my life for anyone else at this date. So yeah. no, that makes maybe sense. that'll change in a couple of years, but... Have you have you tried dating or are you not even like I mean, giving I've, it a shot? I've dabbled with trying. Mm-hmm. I've surely dabbled with trying, mm-hmm. but like I don't I haven't gotten very far. <laughs> Has it been because you just haven't met anybody that you really want to give it the old college try, so to speak? Or have you just like met so many obstacles that you're like, this is just not worth it at this time for me? I don't want a relationship. You know, I actively do not want a relationship. I don't want someone bothering my phone, wondering where I'm at. I don't want to have to feel like I need to check in with someone. I don't feel like, I don't want someone to feel entitled to my free time. You know, like I don't, I just really don't want that. If I could have a relationship, whether it's all the the friendship and companionship and great sex of a relationship without severe commitment, I don't know. But then that's like hollow. I'm at a place where I'm just happy doing me for now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you think that you want like the traditional life at some point? Do you like want like marriage and kids and all that stuff? Definitely, definitely. Okay. But I could see my life looking a little non-traditional from the outside in or when you look at it a little bit closer. Um, but yeah, I'd love to be a mom someday. That would be goals. Do you worry at all about like becoming a mom and like talking to your kids about being in porn? Or is that something that doesn't even cross your mind yet? Uh, my kids would not exist theoretically, without me doing porn. You know, Mm. part of the reason I decided to do porn was to build a life that would be sustainable so that I could have kids. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, everything else that I was doing just kind of wasn't at an earning potential where I felt comfortable starting a family because I want to give my children the fucking world. So if they feel embarrassed that I did porn at some point, it's like tough shit. You wouldn't be here without porn. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there, even if I'm, you know, a mom in the traditional sense, or if I, you know, adopt someday or whatever the case is. Right, like, right. Yeah, I'm just always curious about people's like thoughts on that because, you know, I come from a very non-traditional like family background. Obviously, I mean, you met my mom. Yeah, and I'm like, what do you, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, what I think <laughs> is I think that like you should do what you want. And if you want to be a mother, you should be a mother. And if you're a sex worker and a mother, then like there's nothing to be ashamed about. And right. everybody has a different way of of handling it. And I think that if you love your children and you raise them right and you make them feel supported and safe, like they're not going to really like care that much. I'm like, you're exhibit A, they turn out fine. <laughs> I'm the perfect example of how you can have parents that work important and like turn out totally awesome. Yes. <laughs> Really though, though. I mean, though, to be fair, like I think about it, I mean, my parents never performed, right? Like my mom was never like in the scenes though. <laughs> Though she definitely like slept around. My parents were total swingers. Yeah. And, you know, going through family albums, like find pictures of like my dad in an orgy. And I'm just like, well, <laughs> that's dad. You know what I mean? And like, it doesn't, I think if they had done porn, like, I, I don't think I know. Like, I wouldn't care. Yeah. Like, I really wouldn't care. Yeah. It's like, already so adjacent. Yeah. 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 And it's just like, I hear these stories about me and my parents and what they did. And, you know, my, my mom was like a total fucking horror. Um, and I say that in like the most loving way. Um, you know, and coming across like these pictures of, you know, like them at orgies and all that kind of stuff. And I just like, it just makes me laugh because I'm just like, mm-hmm. well, that's, oh, that's mom and dad. All right. You know, like they were young they and they were having fun living and like, their lives. living yeah, their life. Exactly. That's, I feel like that's the kind of photos that you want to see, like yeah. versus like, what? Like you don't want to see photos of them like being all sad at home doing nothing. Like, yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah, I think it. that it's just, it's all about like, you just like love your kids, you know, and you just yeah. like raise them right. And like, 
You're going to be fine. Yeah, I'm straight. And they're going to be fine. Yeah. You know? So hopefully I'm lucky enough to be able to experience that someday. You, I think you will. Jeez. You have so much time. Yeah. I didn't have my first kid till I was 40. And I'm glad I waited that long. Though I'm yeah. sort of like wish I had frozen my eggs because I can't have a second kid because I'm too old now. Hmm. But that would be my only recommendation. Yeah, I say, we should talk about that later. Yeah, that would be my <laughs> only recommendation. Freeze. If you're a woman in your like 30s and you don't want to have like kids anytime soon, I would freeze your eggs. You won't regret it later. Damn straight. Yeah. That's something I'm considering. My audience is like 98% men. They're going to be like, we don't care. <laughs> we'll, we'll scramble those eggs. But there's that, that 2% of girls that are watching. <laughs> Freeze your eggs, ladies. So you said that you've experienced many sexual firsts on camera. What are some of these firsts? Yeah. Well, I, I touched on that my first time with a girl was on camera. Right. So we talked about that, that was camming. That was, you know, really special. So a lot of my other like subsequent you know, first with girls and kind of, you know, the unfolding of that part of my sexuality because I identify as pansexual. And I, I more so identified that way before, but I felt like a poser being like, oh yeah, I'm so pansexual. I like everyone. Even though I'd been like, I've only been with guys, you yeah, know, yeah, you'd right. be like a fake gay. Yeah. <laughs> but like truly I've always been like interested in everyone. I was just so um, careful in a sense that I didn't want to like tokenize anyone for my own like sexual exploration. Mm. Um, and also just like the vibes weren't there in terms of like, I don't know, it's kind of like intimidating to go there for the first time, um, you know, with another girl. But I really liked the element of um, with the whole exploring first on camera with a girl, there's a performative element for the men, but also is kind of um, helpful in terms of like, oh, like, let me guide you. You know what I'm saying? Where the girl's like, oh, let me show you how to eat this pussy. You know, where like, it's kind of, it's a thing and you play it up, but also like that felt helpful to me because I would not have put myself in those situations without, I would have been so uncomfortable just like freaking out and be like, what do I do? You know what I mean? But with these situations, it was totally normal to be like, oh my God, I'm so nervous. Like, and then be like, oh, here, try this. Um, so it made me feel more comfortable kind of like asking questions and just kind of like being real with the way that I really felt um, by being on camera. Um, because if I were in a personal life interaction, I probably just would have like freaked out internally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's not like, it's not like an environment where, it makes sense or feels open to ask questions, right? Because, exactly. Because of the performative element that you were talking about, you want to be better at your job. So you ask somebody who's more experienced to help you with that, but that that job happens to be sex. So yeah. it's like this place where you like automatically facilitates open communication about sex, which I think so many people don't have. Exactly. So that was really, really pivotal in terms of like making me feel comfortable working with women. I don't know. I remember there was one point where I was like, um, talking with one of my girlfriends and I was just like in tears and I don't even know what the context of this situation was but I was like I'm just so nervous to do anything with a girl because I feel I'm so inexperienced and I can't ever make a girl come and she was like Millie you've made me come so many times and I was like really? <laughs> Wait, I, I have. And do you feel like, for me, I feel like getting that kind of validation from a woman is somehow like stronger than from a man, right? Because like oh, we're yeah. we're more difficult to please and Absolutely. to bring to orgasm. Absolutely, it just takes yeah. longer. It's more of an investment. It's a whole thing, mm-hmm. and so that's why it's like guys are easy. Like you hit the spot enough times the right way, it's inevitable. But like women, you have to really like finesse and know what you're doing. Yeah. But in terms of other firsts, I've done so many firsts on camera. Um, I did my first spit roast, you know, my first um, boy, boy, girl. Can you explain to our audience what a spit roast is? (laughs) A spit roast is when you're sucking dick and getting fucked at the same time. So boy, boy, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I did my first... um, all the, all the fun things. You you wouldn't be doing like a double penetration Mm -hmm. for porn, I feel like. But like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I've done like a... Did you like that? Well, I did a double vatch penetration. Oh, okay. Let me be let me be specific. Okay. Double yeah, vatch. don't. I like don't. double vatch. Okay. <laughs> Have like, you done anal yet? I've tried to dabble with anal. Mm. My I don't I'm but not a, I'm not a fan. Yeah, yeah. I think that it's I'd say that it's oh, I'll save it for my personal life, but I don't really quite enjoy it necessarily my personal mm-hmm. life either. Yeah. I always say that maybe I'll like get into it one day, just like the same way that I'll be like, oh yeah, one day I'll like learn Spanish. You know, like <laughs> It's just like my future version of myself does anal. Like there's an idealized version of myself who's like such a fucking anal queen, but like 
<laughs> and also speak Spanish. Yeah, exactly. You learn Spanish. You should learn Spanish. And so when you do your first anal scene, you can just do the whole thing in Spanish. Soy Millie. <laughs> <laughs> Me gusta mucho. <laughs> Say el grande penis. I don't know. <laughs> Muy grande. <laughs> oh, God. I love that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that'll, maybe in 10 years' time, you okay. know, it's room for career growth. You know, in 10 years' time, you can speak really good Spanish. If you, you know, practice. I could be like an international superstar. Who yeah. knows? Like, who knows? Yeah, Life is let's full give, of me, give me 15 years, Holly, just okay. to be sure. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, speaking of firsts, I hear you like to sometimes take your fans' virginities. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah. Well, so I've only had the opportunity so far with one fan, but that's because I'm very meticulous and careful about the selection process. But let me rewind for a little bit. Okay. So the fan that I filmed with to, you know, take his virginity um, is someone who's so, so special to me. It's, I've it's been around my online presence since I started on Chatterbait. About a month into camming was when he came into my chat room. So I've known him for a long time at this point. Um, we've known each other about three years, about when, when we filmed together. Um, and I'd met him at a number of expos. And I was just like, oh, he's such a sweet guy. Like, he's so nice. You know, just seeing that he's real and as he represents himself to be. And he was a virgin. Um, he just was very inexperienced. How old was he, can I ask? I was 35. Okay. I think. Okay. I forget. I'm like, and, I mean, just, yeah. But like, he was mid 30s. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so I was his first, his first everything. Um, oh. I had told him um, right around the time that um, my relationship ended and I started doing porn and I, you know, rebranded myself into my like slut era, which is, is funny. I'm gonna have to change that because that's just my slut life now. Mm -hmm. um, but I told him and I was like, you know, if you come out here, um, don't take your V card. We got to film it. But like, that was kind of the conditions of like, you come out here and get tested and we'll do the thing. So he did. Um, oh, I bet he fucking did. Yeah, he I bet did. he bought that plane ticket so fast. Yeah. So it took us, you know, some planning, coordination for a few months. Um, and when he came, um, you know, we spent a few times just like hanging out, just going on a couple dates. It was really actually really funny um, because we were sitting, we were coming back from like a movie or dinner and we were sitting at a stoplight and there was like a car full of teenagers. This is like a Friday night or something. So they're just like being rowdy and rambunctious and they have the windows down and they're like le leering out the car window trying to like talk to us and I'm ignoring them. But then I look over and I see one of the mushroom mouths. She's like, is that your man? And I'm like, yeah, that's my man. And the whole car, they're like going crazy and they're ooing and aahing. And they're like, that's not your man. That's not your man. And he's blushing so hard. And I'm like rolling down the window to like, you know, go back and forth with them. And they're like, y'all should kiss. And so I just immediately grabbed him and like put one on him. But I didn't know that, that was his first kiss. <gasps> it, so, was? it was his first kiss ever. Oh my god! And gosh. it was, you know, not on camera, but that was, you know, <laughs> really spontaneous and cute in the moment. Um, but I was also like... Why are y'all hating? Like, yeah, that's my man. Like, hell yeah. So tell me about the actual scene. Like, how did it go? How did he do? He must have been super nervous, right? He was He was really, really nervous. I think that at the beginning, he was like, oh, I'm not nervous. I'm not nervous. Um, and then when we actually were getting down to things, he was like, oh, shit, I kind of forgot to be nervous. Yeah, he, um, he does not reach orgasm. Okay. Spoiler alert. Yeah, <laughs> at the I end mean, of the video. That's you know, um, there coming are, on cue is very hard. There's you know a lot of technical difficulties to be transparent, but I think that it's still a really valid experience because we're able to kind of like just redirect and engage in a lot of foreplay in a way that is still a very sex for so many people isn't just like a penis in a vagina. So. In terms of like a heteronormative virgin virginity experience, it really wasn't that. Um, but like that man had sex, it, the penetration mm -hmm. it could be argued. But like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I still think that it's really valid for so you know you don't need penetration to have sex. Mm -hmm. So I mean, look, if he had never kissed a girl before, then like all of that is so. Like 
the next level that he's never been to. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a lot. It is. It is a lot. And I think that... It's like second and third base, you know? Yeah. And what I didn't expect for the video is I didn't expect it to be as successful as it was mm. um, because I thought they were like, mm, there's going to be no come. They're going to be like, oh, he didn't come. Like, mm, whatever. Like, we don't really care. But I think through the fact that there are those like technical difficulties that we're sorting through throughout the video, um, people who are still virgins, they find a lot of like hope and faith in that in a way because they're like, I think their number one fear in a sense for some of them is A, that they'll never lose their virginity or B, that if they do, that it might be, they'll be too nervous. They'll just have too much going on for it to work. And I think they're able to see in real time that like, yeah, it's not always this fairy tale of like the dick is up and then the pussy goes on and then like the, the magic happens. And everybody, but both people come at the same time. Yeah, exactly. That's my favorite, like in the movies. Oh, right. Everyone orgasms at the same time. Oh, always. Yeah, no. Um, so they're able to see that like you're not, it's not always a fairy tale story for your first time, but that it's still okay, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You'll live and that like you'll live to fuck another day. Yeah. So really interesting because before my last guest before I had you was Bonnie Blue, who actually like has made a thing of going and on like these spring break trips and like having sex with a bunch of like 18 year olds, like and often taking people's virginities. And she said that, you know, obviously a lot of the scenes are not, you know super strong in terms of like performance and like coming and, you know, all the things that we expect from like a professional porn scene. But she says that her fans love that because so many of them are younger, um, you know, and virgins maybe, and don't have a lot of experience with women. And they get to see that it's okay, like for you to not be able to perform like Manuel Ferrara. You know what I mean? Whereas like, you know, in the studio porn industry, you know, we have like these exceptional sexual athletes. Sexual that's, athletes. That's literally so what the, they are. Yes, yes. The men specifically. Yes. With these, you know, very out of the ordinary size penises. Yeah, that's not and normal. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> not normal. And, you know, they, they perform these insane, like, you know, positions. Fucking upside down and sideways. Upside down. Yeah. And like, I mean, like Prince Yeshua's like fucking blowjob somersaults. Uh, sex thing that he does that, like, I almost had a heart attack the first time he did that. I thought he was going to break the girl's neck. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. this Cirque du Soleil shit um, that a lot of people can't do. And yeah. so I think, unfortunately, because so many people don't have, like, real sex education, um, they get it from porn, which is the worst place to get it. And then they have these unrealistic expectations of what they think they're supposed to perform like, what sex is supposed to be like. And so interactions like that, I think fans can often really love and relate because they relate to it. Yeah. And I really, in particular, like I want very much to keep working with virgins, but mm-hmm. I'm just very picky and selective about who I'm picking. Cause you know, any guy can, you know, dim me and be like, hey baby, I'm a virgin. You know what I mean? But obviously it takes a little bit more screening than that to kind of like catch the nuance of, you know, is this person being genuine or not? Um, but then also on top of that, you know, like I really also want to make sure that they're, you know, feeling supported and that they're the right fit for something like this, because like a virginity is something that is forever, you know what I mean? And I don't take that lightly, you know, as much as like everyone has their own importance, you know, and that they place on their virginity. But, you know, I want the people that I work with to, you know, be clear that they've gotten me, you know, a friend for life and someone who's, you know, always going to care about them. But like, it's not going to be, I'm not their wifey. I was going to ask you if you're concerned about like having uh, them having unreasonable expectations afterwards, you know, like yeah. catching feelings in a way that is not, um, you know, not, not professional like, or whatever. No, yeah. yeah but like, I mean, it's not also realistic. It's, yeah. But I mean, it's also, it's a, it's a give and take because it's like, I also don't want to, you know, have a clinical experience for them. You know, I need for them to feel comfortable and supported and, you know, there needs to be a trust between us, you know, there needs to be a rapport and some level of comfortability. So yeah, it is hard to build that with also maintaining the boundary of, you know, what the interaction is in terms of like, I am taking your virginity for the purpose of you to not be a virgin and I'm also going to film it and share it, you know? Um, So that's the main reason why I have not done another virgin video quite yet, Um, but I do have... 
some virgins that I've been uh, nurturing, if you will. I am always trying to nurture more virgins. So uh, <laughs> hopefully there will be more virgin videos. And I do have, um, I did have a fan video that I did while I was at Expos Miami. Oh, okay. So and he was not a virgin. He was not a virgin. Okay. No. But in terms of like very regular guy, as, mm-hmm. as they all say. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm really excited. I think I, that'll scratch... Scratch the itch in the meantime. Because they're like, well, why are all these guys porn stars? And I'm like, I'm I'm sorry. I'm trying to, yeah. <laughs> trying to be a good girl and stay tested. Come yeah. on. Yeah, that's like, true. Because yeah. you got to be careful. You got to like keep your circle small kind of as well, or at least like make sure that the people that you're doing scenes with are, you know, being tested. And, yeah, and everyone's being careful and being yeah. mindful. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I know y'all want to see me fuck regular guys. I've been trying to fuck regular guys. I say, okay, get tested. Let's fuck. Yeah. It's so hard for them to get tested somehow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went on a, a date with a fan recently um, because we were supposed to film the next day. Um, but he was supposed to be tested and he didn't get tested. No. Did he just like think that that, that he could squeeze by on that? Like, I think so. Because he told mm-hmm. me, I, you know, at the end of dinner, I was kind of like, so about tomorrow. And he goes, yeah, you know, I'm just more comfortable working with a condom on. And I go, okay, let's. That's fine. Let's talk about that. Like, why? He was just like, yeah, I'm just not ready to be a dad. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm just like, baby, out of all the guys I fuck, out of all, you really, I could have a daycare worth of children. You know what I mean? <laughs> all the smart, yeah, I'm just going to keep every, ba- you know, like, yeah. no, just no. I was just kind of like, yeah, like not, I take preventative measures against yeah, that. Yeah, you're, you're like, you're there's, there's reasons that I don't have 50 kids right now, but I have lots of sex. Like, I'm yeah. not. So, yeah, it was just a, it was a ploy and a con. But yeah. Whatever. I got, well, a, I got a burger, so. Hey, hey, you hey. know. Hey. Well, Millie, thank you so much for coming on. Um, it's been such a pleasure to get to know you. And um, I do have some Patreon questions for you. So if you don't mind, we're going to do a special extra segment um, exclusive to my Patreon members. And um, you can access that, of course, at patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered. But for now, um, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? I'm Millie Morgan. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm your girl underscore Millie. My Instagram is Millie Morgan Official. And you can just find me on all corners of the internet lurking with my titties out. Do you have like an OnlyFans or like a full links profile? Yeah, yeah well, they'll find it on the socials. Okay. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. <laughs> and you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Just mentioned my Patreon platform. Um, go to hollylinks.com for access to all of my links. I'm on like so many fucking different platforms. I couldn't possibly list them all here. And uh, make sure that you join my Patreon to access interviews like these live. You could be watching this live and in the moment right now. Um, and you could also be, you know... Um, watching our little Q&A that we're going to do with questions submitted by my Patreon members. So, um, so many goodies for you over there. So make sure you go and visit. Thank you guys so much for joining us and I'll see you on the next one.